Once upon a time in a quiet suburban town, there lived a young student named Alex. Alex was a kind and gentle soul, but he was also shy and introverted. This made him a target for bullies at school. Every day, Alex would be tormented by a group of older students. They will call him names, make fun of his clothes, and even push him around. Alex tried to ignore them, but it was no use. The bully only gets worse. One day, the bullies cornered Alex in the bathroom. They beat him up and left him lying on the floor bleeding and bruised. Alex was so humiliated and traumatized that he decided to end his life. The next morning, Alex's parents found him hanging dead in his bedroom. They were devastated by their son's death, and the entire town was in shock. After Alex's funeral, the bullies who had tormented him were filled with guilt and remorse. They realized that their actions had led to his death, but it was too late. Alex was gone. A few weeks after Alex's death, strange things began to happen at the school. Students would hear whispers in the empty hallways, and doors would slam shut on their own. Some students even mentioned to have seen Alex's ghost wandering the school grounds. One night, a group of students decided to stay late at school to work on a project. They were alone in the building, except for the janitor. As the students were working, they began to hear strange noises. They heard footsteps echoing in the hallways, and they saw shadows moving out of the corners of their eyes. The students became frightened, but they tried to stay calm. They thought that maybe it was just their imaginations, or maybe it was just the janitor, but then they heard a voice. I'm coming for you, the voice said. The students froze in terror. They didn't know what to do. Then they saw it. Alex's ghost was standing in the doorway. He was pale and gaunt, with his eyes sunken into his skull. His clothes were torn and tattered, and blood was dripping from his wounds. The students screamed and ran, but Alex's ghost was faster. He chased them through the hallways, laughing maniacally. Alex's ghost caught one of the students and dragged him into a dark classroom. The other students listened in horror as they heard the students' screams. When the screams finally stopped, the students ran out of the school and into the night. They never went back. The next day, the students told the police what had happened but the police didn't believe them. They thought that the students were just traumatized by Alex's death and that they were making up stories. But the students knew what they had seen. They knew that Alex's ghost was real. Alex's ghost continued to haunt the school for many years. Students will often see him wandering the hallways or they will hear his whispers in the empty classrooms. Some students even claim to have been attacked by Alex's ghost. They would be scratched and bruised, but there would be no one else around. The teachers and administrators tried everything they could to get rid of Alex's ghost, but nothing worked. He was determined to stay at the school and get revenge on the bullies who had tormented him. Next story. Ms. Adams was a beloved teacher at Oakwood Elementary School. She had been teaching for over 20 years, and she was known for her patience, kindness, and dedication to her students. One day, Ms. Adams was walking to her classroom when she saw a strange figure standing in the hallway. It was a young girl dressed in a white dress. The girl had long black hair that covered her face. Ms. Adams stopped and stared at the girl. The girl didn't move. She just stood there staring back at Ms. Adams. Ms. Adams felt a chill run down her spine. She took a step back, then turned and walked away. Ms. Adams tried to forget about the strange girl, but she couldn't. She kept seeing her out of the corner of her eye. She would see her in the hallways, in the classroom, and even in her dreams. Ms. Adams started to become paranoid and withdrawn. She stopped talking to her friends and family, and she spent all of her time at the school. One day, Ms. Adams was alone in her classroom late at night. 
She was grading papers when she heard a noise outside the door. She froze, her heart pounding in her chest. The noise came again, closer this time, Ms. Adam slowly got up and walked to the door. She put her hand on the doorknob and hesitated. Then she took a deep breath and opened the door. The hallway was dark, but Ms. Adams could see the figure of the strange girl standing at the end of it. The girl was staring at her with empty eyes. What are you doing here? Ms. Adams asked. The girl didn't answer. She just kept staring at her. Ms. Adams felt a chill run down her spine. She took a step back and reached for the doorknob. Stand back, she said. The girl didn't move. I said stand back, Ms. Adams shouted. The girl slowly turned and walked away. Ms. Adams watched her go, then she closed the door and locked it. Ms. Adams went back to her desk and tried to finish grading her papers, but she couldn't concentrate. She kept thinking about the strange girl she had seen in the hallway. Who was she? And why was she haunting her? The next day, one of Ms. Adams' students disappeared. The police searched the school and the surrounding area, but they couldn't find any trace of the child. A few days later, another student disappeared, then another and another. The parents of the missing children were frantic. They demanded that the police do something to find their children. The police were baffled. They couldn't figure out who was taking the children or why. One day, a local news reporter interviewed Ms. Adams about the missing children. Do you think the disappearances are connected? The reporter asked. Ms. Adams hesitated. I don't know, she said. But I do think something strange is going on. The reporter nodded. Can you tell us more? Ms. Adams shook her head. No, she said. I'm afraid not, Ms. Adams couldn't tell the reporter about the strange girl she had been seeing. She was afraid that people would think she was crazy. But Ms. Adams knew that the girl was real, and she knew that she was somehow responsible for the missing children. One night, Ms. Adams was alone in her classroom. She was grading papers when she heard a noise outside the door. She froze, her heart pounding in her chest. The noise came again, closer this time. Ms. Adams slowly got up and walked to the door. She put her hand on the doorknob and hesitated. Then she took a deep breath and opened the door. The strange girl was standing in the hallway. She was staring at Ms. Adams with her empty eyes. What do you want? Ms. Adams asked. The girl didn't answer. She just kept staring at her. Ms. Adams took a step towards the girl. Tell me what you want, she shouted. The girl smiled. It was a cold, cruel smile. I want to play, she said. Ms. Adams felt a wave of terror wash over her. She knew that she had to get away. She turned and ran back into her classroom. She slammed the door shut and locked it. She leaned against the door, gasping for breath. She looked around her classroom, but she couldn't see the strange girl anywhere. Ms. Adams knew that the girl was still out there, somewhere. She could feel her presence. Ms. Adams ran to her desk and grabbed her phone. She dialed 911, but there was no answer. Ms. Adams was trapped. She had nowhere to go. Ms. Adams heard a noise behind her. She turned around and saw the strange girl standing in the doorway. The girl was smiling. It's time to play, the girl said. Miss Adams screamed. She turned and ran to the window. She smashed the window with her chair and climbed out. Miss Adams landed on the ground and ran. She didn't know where she was going, but she knew she had to get away from the school. Miss Adams ran through the woods, her heart pounding in her chest. She could hear the strange girl's laughter echoing through the trees. Ms. Adams came to a clearing and saw a road in the distance. She ran towards the road, but a car came speeding around the corner. Ms. Adams screamed and waved her arms, but the car didn't stop. It hit her and sent her flying. Ms. Adams landed on the ground, her body broken. She lay there, gasping for breath. 
the strange girl appeared over her. She was smiling. Game over, the girl said. The girl raised her hand and pointed at Ms. Adams. Ms. Adams felt a searing pain in her chest. She looked down and saw a bloodstain growing on her shirt. Ms. Adams closed her eyes and took her last breath. The strange girl stood over Ms. Adams' body for a moment. Then she turned and walked away. The next day, the police found Ms. Adams' body in the clearing. They ruled her death an accident, but some people in the town believed that she had been murdered. The strange girl was never seen again. But the people of Oakwood Elementary School still whisper about her to this day. They say that she's the ghost of a former student who was killed in the school many years ago. Next story. It was an old school with a long and storied history. But one day something strange happened at the school. The study board in the classroom started to show scary messages from hell. At first, the teacher and students didn't notice the messages. But then, one day, a student was sitting at her desk, studying for a test, when she saw the message on the study board change. The message said, You're going to die. The student was terrified. She ran out of the classroom and told the teacher. The teacher didn't believe her at first, but then he went to the classroom and saw the message for himself. The teacher was shocked. He had never seen anything like it before. He tried to erase the message, but it wouldn't go away. The teacher decided to tell the principal about the haunted study board. The principal was also skeptical at first, but when he saw the message for himself, he knew that he had to do something. The principal called in a priest to exercise the study board. The priest came to the school and performed an exorcism. But it didn't work. The study board was still haunted. The principal decided to close the classroom where the haunted study board was located. He also hired a security guard to watch the classroom at night. But even the security guard couldn't stop the haunted study board. One night, the security guard was sitting in the classroom, watching the study board. He was bored, so he started to play a game on his phone. Suddenly, the security guard heard a noise. He looked up and saw that the message on the study board had changed. The message said, We're coming for you. The security guard was terrified. He ran out of the classroom and ran to the principal's office. The principal was asleep but the security guard woke him up. He told the principal about the message on the study board. The principal got out of bed and went to the classroom with the security guard. They saw that the message on the study board had changed again. The message said, We're here. The principal and the security guard looked around the classroom, but they didn't see anything. But they could feel it. They could feel the presence of something evil. The principal and the security guard ran out of the classroom and locked the door behind them. They spent the rest of the night in the principal's office, too scared to go back to the classroom. The next day, the principal decided to close the school. He knew that the haunted study board was too dangerous. The students were disappointed, but they understood. They knew that the haunted study board was a threat to their safety. The school was abandoned and the haunted study board was left alone. But the messages on the study board didn't stop. As a huge support, please hit like, subscribe, and maybe share your thought or any experience before going to watch another video. Thank you so much. Have a good day.